We jump into the AFC South on today's show. We talk about some big news, including the J.K. Dobbins news, his injury updates, and talk about a whole lot more in the fantasy football landscape. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Enjoy the episode. Hey, this is John Taylor, running back for the Indianapolis Colts, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. I feel like that had a little oomph to it. It did. A little extra pep. Yeah, I mean, we played some pickleball this morning. We did. So the, the stash is more defined right it now. It's pretty defined right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. It is defining the facial hair. I wonder when it's going to run its course. I think it's getting close. <laughs> <laughs> Already? It's an off-season stash. As soon yeah. as the, uh, Summer stash. Yeah, as soon as the ball is kicked off, then it's then I hope it's not uh, just pure shave. Just, you know, get a oh, I don't know clean, about that. clean go to, uh, shave. Oh, just, I thought you were saying go Lincoln, the, the no mustache. Oh. oh the oh, inverse that. mustache? Yeah. The uh, Amish. I yes. don't, uh, I'm not going to do the clean shave because... I think I'll be re- revisiting the marshmallow face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been uh, there. <laughs> I am there. <laughs> but uh, for now, it's here. And uh, it's Tuesday, July 19th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, Mike Wright, the Deucers as well. Uh, sitting over there in the dark. <laughs> Just um, making sure <laughs> things work. What are they work. up to over there? I don't know. You can never tell. Soon, though. We are oh, going. Oh, careful. I figure careful. once we see it, it has to happen. We are going to be bringing the deucers onto the video. It's it's. <laughs> everyone has said, please don't do this. The deuce cam? Please never show me your deuces. The deuce cam. Deucers. <laughs> and, and yeah, the deuce cam uh, will I mean, be. Short for producer cam. Of course. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Just shorthand here. But. Uh, Anyways, those turds will be shown. Uh, what. <laughs> <laughs> What's great is that so we have three uh, fine gentlemen over there: Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, and and Kyle Leborgogan. Two of them are are I think very anti being the focus of any sort of attention, mm. and then uh, Kyle's much more comfortable with oh, it. Oh, he loves it. He um, loves it. Yeah, that's true. He hosts the DFS podcast. Oof. This is this is not true. He, well, and no, one you, of those you don't host the podcast. I host the pod. I don't want the attention. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. So I just like that we're going to force like pretty much three people who don't want the attention onto a camera where they can be judged by the you know the world of YouTube mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, judge harshly YouTube. Cool, 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 <laughs> judge cool, 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 cool. cool. Uh, AFC South breakdown on today's show. Got some NFL news to talk about. And um, a reminder, everybody out there, if you are not currently enjoying the Ultimate Draft Kit on your computer or on your phone, tablet. I'm sorry for you or your tablet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when do they, when do we get rid of that line, by the way? Which when does, I mean, at some point, be- the phone and tablet, aren't they just going to merge? Yeah. Eventually they, and it will all just become the computer. Okay. Yeah, no more laptops either? I don't think so. I think yeah. you should just be able to plug your phone into a dock. And well, you'll be able to unfold it like five different ways, right? And then it becomes a yes. la- laptop. Yes, and like do origami things with it right. too. UltimateDraftKit.com. A unicorn. To use it on all known devices. Uh, if you want to check out the custom uh, player projections, brand new cheat sheets, uh, we've got our tier-based rankings. So if you want to approach the draft the way we do, uh, ultimatedraftkit.com for that player profile videos and the tiers were just updated literally today yeah they are they are updated always um automatically whenever we make our ranking changes but we go back through with a fine tooth comb and make sure that everything is looking great as you prepare for your drafts so always up to date and then you can find us on socials twitter at the ff ballers instagram.com slash fantasy footballers and then watch the show in the future uh hashtag deuce cam on uh, YouTube.com <laughs> slash the fantasy footballers. We got to get out in front of the censors on this. Well, they're gonna, the algo is not going to be liking that. 
Oh, well, I, I mean, I feel like a Deuce Cam is going to be real popular around here. <laughs> Come so, on. so bad. It's pre- uh, <laughs> Shameful. Are we going to register that domain, though? Or? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sure it's available. Taken. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, the Deuce Cam, don't go there. Oh, I remember this sound effect. It never stops. Yeah. Um, it's got to get it. Yeah, uh, Jason's checking. I he am. shouldn't. He really shouldn't be. No. Uh, if you're new to the show, welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Did you get it? There's, the site can't be reached. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> Great news, everybody. All right. Let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Yeah, I mean, if you're brand new to the show, just a <laughs> reminder, we're an award-winning fantasy football podcast. We are admired among our peers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, but, but we may or may not submit this specific episode yes, for the review. To the Emmys. For said awards. <laughs> All right, some news to talk about. Uh, the, the the first one was a bit of uh, back and forth between Ian Rappaport and Some J.K. Dobbins. Yes, Good stuff. Ian Rappaport came out and said uh, he basically confirmed the meniscus was part of the injury, which we kind of knew had to be the case with how long this recovery has been for running back J.K. Dobbins. And some damage to the lateral side or the LCL. So. Is, it's not good. I believe – the quote was, um, uh, which whose quote? Well, Rappaport said that he's not guaranteed for week one, mm-hmm. and then J.K. Dobbins came out in several tweets and basically said, "You should be using me as a source. I'm recovering quickly. I probably won't even be on the pup, and I'm definitely going to be ready for week one." Yeah, the thing about this is, while all this fun back and forth um, happened on the internet. It was basically confirmed that the injury was more severe than a simple ACL tear. And so when you're saying, okay, can the player accurately predict when he's going to be back? Probably not. It's good to see him saying, I'll definitely be ready for week one, that his rehab is going great. But really, it's a matter of knowing what the injury was because it was kind of hush hush earlier in this offseason. We said, based on the timeline of him not being. Um, not doing anything at the um, you know the the OTAs and stuff that it seemed like it was more than just an ACL that has been confirmed now. So it looks like because of the depth of this injury, this is not one where let's say he's ready week one and he is available. He's not going to be full strength in week one of the NFL. We know that now. So from a fantasy football standpoint, let me, I am down further on Dobbins and up higher on Gus Edwards, who did have a simple ACL injury. Let me bring up another player, and let me you tell me who you're more confident in. Rashad Penny on an offense and system that is questionable. Uh, what is the win totals five and a half? Or J.K. Dobbins, maybe not ready to start the year, oh, but a much better Spence. rushing offense. You've talked a lot about them wanting to – ground and pound there and so those two they jump out to me as having clouds above both of them yeah I I I mean obviously the the offense is going to be so much better with uh Lamar but coming off of the injury I think you've got to take the shot at Rashad Penny there and and it it hurts me to say that because I I love J.K. Dobbins coming into the season I thought he was going to you know be a breakout candidate um but the injury is more severe and I just think that the timeline will be halfway through the season before we get what we want from him physically and if the Ravens are a smart organization so I don't think they're going to push him I don't think they're going to be like you know what we need you to be giving us 70 percent of our carries and receptions from the position in week one that would just be stupid so we've got Mike Davis well and that's what they'll say that is what they'll say that is what they'll say. And because I know, they were willing to say, we have Devontae Freeman. Exactly right. A lot of people, Tyler Beatty, uh, rookie that they drafted late in this year's draft, a lot of people excited about him. And I just, I caution us, because last year we were excited about Tyson Williams, who was clearly the better athlete. I mean, you you look at the old men tandem of Latavius Murray and Devonta Freeman last year, and it was like, oh, gross. And then you, you put the ball in. Uh, Tyson Williams' hands, and it's like, oh, look, explosiveness. Better, yes, absolutely better athlete, but that doesn't necessarily mean better running back. And I, th- I think Beatty is a good, well-rounded running back whose production profile is fantastic. Like, if Beatty had draft capital and not the day three 
you know, unfortunate the the historical trends mm-hmm, of day mm-hmm. three running backs not turning any anything for fantasy. If he was a day two pick, we'd be real excited. I completely agree. In a different world that didn't happen, we yeah. would act differently. I'm just saying that the player. So maybe if he gets an opportunity, I, like, so just to close that up if, in drafts right now, if you're betting on Mike Davis or Beatty, I will bet on Beatty and just if it's wrong it's wrong but I'm going to take the shot on the player who I think well one has upside it, like I has, don't mind yeah. betting on Beatty because if Beatty is given the opportunity he'll do more with it than Mike Davis who will just bump 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 yeah thank you <laughs> oh yeah. good pitch I, the only reason I knew where that drop was in that exact moment is because I was about to hit it <laughs> with the Leonard Fournette news oh no because uh, the Bucks Lenny. coaches were super unhappy. Leonard Fournette didn't show up to optional mini. He got a three-year deal, didn't show up to optional um, the OTAs, and then shows up at mandatory mini camp weighing, uh, quote, darn near 260 pounds. Mm. Yeah. I mean, He's, he was wearing that tuba. You gotta... I don't think it matters that much. I don't think it matters that much either, but – and, like, we got to just pump the brakes a little bit with the – when the numbers are thrown out, because we had, you know, the Najee Harris number was his weight was thrown out and then disputed by uh, by Najee himself, like f- a day after. So it she, we get in shape for net. Just please. Well, yeah. you're going to be great. Yeah. He, he, you know, it's something he's dealt with yeah. conditioning in the past. I mean, he got run out of Jacksonville because they were just kind of tired of it. Uh and when you sign a new deal, do you think when he signed a new deal and Brady retired, he was like, "Oh, I'm good here," and and then it, yeah, whoops. N- now it's just like Brady came back out of retirement. No. Was like, oh, I gotta go jogging. James White still walking with what appeared to be an uncomfortable gait following a community appearance. I have seen Ramondre Stevenson on a lot of people's sleeper boards. Yeah, uh, Damian Harris in that backfield. Uh, do you, you know? It, it it gave me some pause as to how I think things will shake out. I had James White originally projected to return healthy, 70 targets um, involved in third down. If he is not healthy and Ramondre is there, you could see a, a little bit more of a an uncomfortable timeshare for a backfield that's most often uncomfortable. Yeah, that that makes sense. I, I there's a lot of reasons to like Ramondre Stevenson. He looked good last year. He can catch the ball, whereas Damian Harris doesn't. Although Damian Harris is their best running back, like as far as pure runner, I I do think he is being undervalued. Undervalued, but I also understand why. Like I say, he's he's being undervalued. Although I haven't drafted him anywhere because the upside mm-hmm. is so limited without the pass catching work. I'm I feel like I'm just avoiding this backfield. And then we have uh, no. This is not uh, a flashback to last year, but. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, it's being reported. Uh, Jack Hammer of the Santa Rosa Press Democrat newspaper says his performance in minicamp wasn't what you expect from a veteran receiver. Yeah, Did, baby. Uh, we'll get into the analysis here. Did you say that this feller's name is Jack Hammer? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You're right. We're the way he We're read just it. Was let that slip through. Jack Hammer of the Santa Rosa Press. His it's, name is Jack Hammer. It's Jack Hammer. <laughs> Like good I mean, for your parents. This, this dude walking into the lock, jackhammer here. <laughs> oh man, Brandon Ayuk, not looking too good. <laughs> Says the jackhammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the guy's name. I didn't is even catch it, and I feel <laughs> terrible. Jackhammer. First of all, he's a super villain. I mean, there's just no way. He's got a lair. <laughs> jackhammer. I mean, look, when I try to search and find information about this guy, all I see is tools. Wait, so, wait, wait, he hasn't <laughs> taken over the search for He hasn't <laughs> taken over the search for Jackhammer. All I'm seeing is... Get a publicist, man. Yeah. Uh, he That's him. He, he didn't get at Jackhammer on well, Twitter. It's yeah. at Jackhammer underscore NFL. Jack? That's a shame. Good for you, man. Yeah, and good for your parents. <laughs> Fantastic sense of humor. Um, getting to the analysis on Brandon Ayuk's uh, performance being not what you'd expect. So, the reality is, obviously, he uh, disappointed... Mr. Shanahan last beginning of the year and was in the doghouse to start the season. So this is very, very frightening. But if you remember last year, uh, the reason people were high on Brandon Ayuk is because every single thing reported was how great he was doing sure. and how awesome he looked in minicamp and then somehow was in the doghouse. So, you know, maybe uh, maybe this is great news for Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably not, but I, I, I get what you're saying. Uh 
we'll see what happens. It, it's scary. Uh, it seemed like he had gotten things figured out towards the end of the year. So something to monitor because you don't want to take a middle round shot on Brandon Ayuk if there's any doubt. If there's any off-season negative vibes, in my opinion, enough other wide receivers to grab to just not experience what Jason experienced last yeah, year. Yeah, and you don't expect that you're going to have Trey Lance throwing for 680 passes. You know, this is a guy who's going to throw the ball much uh, less than Jimmy Garoppolo did, and then you've got Debo as the one, probably Kittle as the two. So uh, with red flags on Ayuk, it's, it's tough to pull the trigger on that. All right, I don't think there's anything else we need to discuss. All right. In pretty good shape. All right, let's let's uh, let's talk AFC South. Let's get divisional. See, I was trying to figure out if his name was like John or Jacob because that like Jack can be a nickname for those. Mm -hmm. Jack can be a nickname for John? Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know that? What? Yeah. My name's John, but call me Jack. Yeah, like, John Kennedy. Just, well, Jack. I just wanted to know if, yeah, thank you. Jack just a Kennedy. a different name. Oh, I know. It it totally is, but that's one of those. Because he could have opted in to Jackhammer. That would could have been a personal choice it's is like, what I'm saying, which I would opt into if I could. Oh, yes, for sure. I'm looking into it right now for myself. <laughs> oh, if you were Jack the Fantasy Hitman Hammer. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Weapon of choice, Jackhammer. Very impressive. Thank you. Uh, AFC South today, we've been doing divisional breakdowns, off-season changes from 2021 to 2022, looking at players, rookies, coaches, offensive uh, situations last year, how they might function in the upcoming season. And we're taking a look at the win totals, making our predictions on who will win the divisions as well. And uh, if you want to deep dive yourself on any of these uh, players that we talk about, I mean, we this is not – the Titans that we'll only talk about today. We're going through four teams, so not every player will get exhaustive coverage. You can dive into the UDK, check out the consistency charts, market share, target opportunities in the Dynasty Pass, uh, team opportunities in the Dynasty Pass. So we'll begin with the 12-5 and five Tennessee Titans who have a very different vibe going into the season than I think that 12-5 and five record uh, you would expect. Uh, he had, they had a preseason win total of nine and a half last year. Outperformed that. They have been thirteen and four in one score games over the last two years. Impressive. Which is a testament to great coaching. Yes. Um, but also great execution by the players. You know, on this team, Ryan Tannehill, a healthy Derrick Henry. That's where they're starting the season. But no more AJ Brown. Nope, no AJ Brown. But the replacement, Traylon Burks is there is he i don't know well he's that's been missing in action yeah, yeah. quite a lot i mean this is still early in the off season I, I think this is one of the biggest most important storylines for the whole of the tennessee titans offense is Traylon burks is mm -hmm. he actually going to be able to step in and give you 75 percent of aj brown or is he a disappointing rookie bust and if that's the case and your number one wide receiver is robert woods coming off of an acl injury you could see a a quick implosion here of a one tr one dimensional offense yeah and they they are going into the season with a lower win total than they started going into last season so if you saw you know you saw philadelphia have their aj brown win total bump i think you've seen it inversely here in tennessee where you have question marks around that position traylon burks has dealt with conditioning slash asthma issues throughout minicamp there was a report recently that he is expected to be ready for week one, but for training camp, uh, for training camp, but, but that's still, you know, you're going to need to be monitoring that. I think this pendulum has swung quite a bit in drafts. People are avoiding Traylon Burks, but you know, I, my, my confidence is in a PPR league, much more on the Robert Wood side of things. He doesn't have the upside that a, a new rookie has, but from an execution standpoint, He's always produced. He produced in Buffalo. He produced in Los Angeles. All the reports of his health have been the opposite of J.K. Dobbins. Like he's been out there earlier than expected, running routes, looking like he's healthy. Um, so I am feeling more positive about him being more of a PPR steal, where right now he's going in the 40s at the wide receiver position, and he may be their number one target. Yeah, he. he uh, I would guess that he is their number one target. When you have a veteran like him who's a clean route runner, and, you know, is going to be where you want him to be, that's probably your possession guy over a Traylon Burks 
who uh, hopefully overcomes this. I mean, we're, we got to watch in training camp to see if he's back there, if he's figured out the asthma and the conditioning issues. Um, I, I do hope, or I, I, you know, I think there's a world where the negativity on Traylon Burks pushes him down to a point where he could still be a value. I mean, he, we're, we're, he's not missing games here just because you're getting bad, you know, you're getting yelled at by Mike Vrabel. I'm sure everybody there is getting yelled at by Mike sure. Vrabel. Um, the real question here about this offense all surrounds Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry was not really good last year. He was dominant. He was embarrassingly better than Jonathan Taylor on a per game. He was a cheat code last year, and then he broke his foot, and it was done. And now you've got an older, heavy usage running back coming back off of this injury, being drafted as the running back three. The th you know On average, he's the third player picked. And it's so scary because, I mean, even the offensive line ranks, right? Last year they ended uh, PFF ranks as the 16th best offensive line. Heading into the year, they're ranked 27th. So he is one of the scariest picks for me. And uh, you, never wanna, you never want to call a bust on such an outlier of a human being, but it's, it's really difficult for me to draft Derrick Henry with the same out. confidence. Yeah, I just have so many fears of, you know, coming off of that injury, maybe re-aggravating it. They also had, you know, A.J. Brown was hurt a lot last year, and so they ended up facing the uh, second-highest stack box rate in the NFL, and he was actually below expectation against stack boxes. So I, I doubt Robert Woods and a rookie are going to intimidate on any level that doesn't mean the game plan isn't stop Derrick Henry at all, uh, at all costs. So... You know, part of the worries going into last year, you can say, ah, freak accident. No, it's not a freak accident when you're getting that level of workload. It is a built-in risk of an aged running back that mm -hmm. I still think he's one of the best in the game, and I think he will come back, and when he's healthy, he will be one of the best in the game. He's terrifying. But he could get hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, this injury timeline for him, though, we, we need to say the, the good news here. The fact that he um, waited at least 10 uh, weeks to return to play – says that his injury, his re-injury risk is half of what it would have been if he came back a little earlier. Plus, he already came back. This isn't like, oh, we hope he's back. You know, all these Robert Woods, he's coming back from an ACL. He came back healthy. He waited long enough. So we should be recovered from this injury. The injury should be a non-factor. It's just a scary thing, you know, in the back of your mind. I did. The other two players were talking about Ryan Tannehill as it pertains to just the quarterback landscape and fantasy. And then Austin Hooper, who I took with my last pick mm -hmm. in a recent mock draft, who, again, I think they brought him in here to soak up some targets. He didn't do a lot in Cleveland, but he was a weapon on a bad wide receiver room uh, situation for Matt Ryan uh, in Atlanta a couple years in a row, I believe, with 75 receptions. So I think you keep it in the back of your mind. He fits the streaming tight end category. If you end up punting tight end in your draft, I do think he will. He's not going to be a goose for your team. Sure. He's going to be somebody that is going to give you some uh, at least pedestrian tight end totals that keep you in matches. And then Tannehill. He's been a top 12 guy the last couple of years. Yeah, it, it's really tough to find the confidence going into this season. Um, last year was accumulation situation it was like uh you know Matthew Stafford finished what five or six because of uh just kind of the consistency Tannehill had so many games outside the top 15 I mean he had uh what looks like 10 of his 17 weeks outside the top 15 at the position so you really need to pick your spots if you're going to start him his production did go down substantially from 3,800 yards in 16 games to 3,700 in 17 games from a 6.9% touchdown rate down to four. Again, A.J. Brown, not himself. I mean, the, the Titans and, and seven rushing touchdowns each of the last two years for Ryan Tannehill. It's, well, we'll, we'll see if he can keep that up. The Titans have made such a massive bet on Traylon Burks. I think that's p part of where – why it feels so negative because the stakes were massive. Like, they – essentially one for one traded AJ Brown f in his contract situation for Traylon Burks. So to have that come in and your first impression is, Oh, this guy's out of shape. His asthma is not managed. This is a disaster. So I, I think that's why it, the, the, 
the reaction to him have been so visceral that, that because of those stakes. So I'm with Jason that it I, it may have gone too far. Uh, he his tape to me in college like this guy was a big play machine. Yeah, it's not like he didn't have asthma in college. Right. This and, is a pro, you know a professional he did, he athlete didn't just now, show up now. Yeah. who it's has professional asthma. <laughs> yeah, who's you know dealt with this his whole life. So he you know I. I hope he falls and becomes a value in drafts and dominates. That's my hope. Yeah, and uh, it's worth saying the Titans have the most vacated targets and vacated air yards in the NFL. Derrick Henry was on pace for 40-plus receptions before the injury. So when you talk about vacated targets, yeah. Henry, if healthy, could be involved in that capacity as well. Where are you guys taking Henry? At what point are you taking him at that third spot? Does I, he need a drop past? I enjoyed the time I had with Derrick Henry last year <laughs> very much. So I personally am very comfortable with him in that third spot. I I would I believe that right now I'm taking Cooper Cup and Justin Jefferson ahead of Derrick Henry after those two I think that's where I am first too. running backs are off the board. So I guess the only question I have when you bring that up is like the difference of value or risk with McCaffrey versus Derrick Henry because the numbers we saw from Henry last year, you said it they blew Jonathan Taylor out of the water. Mm -hmm. They're better than what anything Christian McCaffrey was doing. Uh, McCaffrey was still sensational in those, whatever, three healthy oh, games. No, don't get me wrong. I, he, he was. But McCaffrey was putting up numbers that would have been dwarfed by what Henry was doing last year at the beginning of the year because Henry was doing unbelievable things. Comes down to... I guess me, I'm just saying, is it just the age with the injury it's, risk? It's, because it's, it's age and size of like... Christian McCaffrey's, I don't think his injuries are related. I think it was a bad string of, of luck that he ran into those. Meanwhile, Derrick Henry is ginormous, and his the, the feet bones are, are – they're still tiny little feet bones, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Incredible those, analysis here. I deep, just, I, tiny little feet bones. Hold on. Let me see if I can follow. Big yeah. man, tiny little feet bones. Yes. I mean, like the I, big men. Big men are more durable. I mean, the, the big guys up on the top, not in the feet. And so he had a foot so, injury. So you're actively worried about the foot. I am so versus yeah, a bit. other injury versus random. Yes. The kind of thing we look at McCaffrey. We're saying, what's next? We don't know if it's one thing or the other. It's are you're worried about Derrick Henry's foot re-injury? Yes. If if Derrick Henry had, but if it was like a quad, he's a size 14 shoe, by the way. Okay. So, uh, I mean, they're not that bad. That's, that's a good size decent, foot. Decent yeah, size foot. Bones. I'm, I'm size 13, and I've had some foot issues lately on the pickleball court. So, look, it, it, <laughs> okay. I, okay. I, I, can, I can tell it's you, there's still, there's still Is there tiny Henry little. 40? <laughs> <laughs> um, to speak to the Christian Moving McCaffrey. On. To speak to the Christian McCaffrey numbers in the healthy games and half PPR, um, last year Christian McCaffrey averaged 20.3 fantasy points. Jonathan Taylor finished with an average of twenty point eight. Derrick yeah. Henry was twenty three. So it's 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 a pretty big difference. Yeah, it's a good point to bring up that the if if everything goes right for Henry, he's as yes. good as it gets. Okay, we are going to uh, move on from Tennessee and take a quick break, and then come back with the Colts. The Colts last year, nine and eight, had a preseason win total of nine and a half last year. This year, it's at 10. So uh, it's been bet up from nine and a half. They were two and five in one score games. So nine and eight could have been a lot better last year if they had been able to close. But Carson Wentz, not a closer. Say, so speaking of close, uh, you know, finishing out against the Raiders with a loss in week 17. And then. No, no. That, that Don't week, say it. The week 18. Oh. No. Winning in against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He closed the door on their <laughs> playoffs. And then they closed it behind him and they said goodbye. I mean, that was such a. We've talked about it when we when we discussed, I think, the you know Washington and the NFC East. Carson Wentz's statistical numbers were fine. Yes. Like end of season yep. looking at it. But when it mattered, a huge, dumb interception. I mean, you've seen the videos where he's got Jonathan Taylor oh, yes. in the middle of the field, and he throws it to Michael Pittman in triple coverage. Yep. The boneheaded types of plays that they made, that he made, got him shown the door. They bring in Mount Ryan, and you know, 
we'll discuss what yeah. the what that means. The accuracy difference from a clean pocket between Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan are drastic. Matt Ryan has not had a clean pocket very often over the last couple of years in Atlanta. So it will be very interesting to see how a former MVP who still looked good last year, he, he lost a lot of weapons, didn't have much around him and had very little protection. But Matt Ryan didn't, to me, look like someone that's toast. He didn't look like Ben Roethlisberger where you're going, is time to retire at all. So if he has still got it, and now you've got a good offensive mind at head coach, a, a a good offensive line. You've got Jonathan Taylor to take some pressure off of you. I do think that this is a this is a bigger upgrade to me than what Carson Wentz provides to the Washington Manders. Let me paint the best case scenario for Indianapolis with Matt Ryan. It's Kurt Warner's arrival in Arizona in two thousand nine. Ooh. Because that's a good arrival. Because Matt Ryan is eight years older than Carson Wentz. You are talking about a 37 year old Matt Ryan in the twilight of his career, regardless of whether he's lost it all or not. Jason's point about the offensive line, he hasn't had one for a couple of seasons. So you don't have the ability to say, yeah, he's done, right? You haven't had uh, a healthy wide receiver room for Matt Ryan in a couple of years. He gets a big-time weapon in Michael Pittman, and he has protection in the backfield, being able to turn and hand the ball off to Jonathan Taylor. So we will see what he has left. And now the risk of toast is there, right? It's, I mean, you're 37 and a half, and you've struggled to throw touchdowns in recent years, and you've always struggled in the red zone. So there is some concern. I mean, that it might not go the way you hope. The Colts have been dealing with new quarterbacks every single season for quite some time. It it is possible, it, but guys. You know, the, when, and they the were Cliff, there with Philip Rivers, by the way, recently. And uh, but just like you know, friend of the show, Graham Barfield, he tweeted out, you know, comparing Matt Ryan to Carson Wentz, like looking at you know certain situations and how accurate was Matt Ryan and on target throws from a clean pocket. Target throws on non-screens, throws under pressure, on target throws that were deep targets, so 15 or more air yards. Matt Ryan was top 10 in all of those categories. Meanwhile, Carson Wentz was not top 15 in any of them and was outside of the top 25 in three of the four of those categories I just listed off. Like Matt, Ryan is, Matt Ryan is a bigger upgrade to this team, I think, than, I think, than people are truly realize but, but let me make a counterpoint because I, I don't disagree that he could have a great season in Indianapolis but all of the things that you said that were true about him translated to absolutely jack squat for fantasy players none of those metrics whether he's good at all those things or not he was a terrible fantasy quarterback what for this past year yes well so it, I, he may me, be able to do those things but he was atrocious because he didn't have a lot to work with he had you had know, rookie Kyle Pitts who Led the I mean, way he had in over a, He had over 1,000 yards as a rookie tight end. He lost Calvin Ridley immediately. And then over the back, I don't remember, five or six games or so, Russell Gage was a very usable fantasy player. And that's Russell Gage, man. Like that's, Mike, I think Michael Pittman is, is a truly elite up-and-coming wide receiver. Like This situation is and it's so much different than what he was dealing with for the Falcons. But you were a team that, I mean, the Colts are 30th in pace of play, 27th in pass attempts, 26th sure. in passing yards. Philosophically, I'm just saying you can be amazing at all of those. Like the thing we said that was wrong with Carson Wentz was he couldn't perform when you needed him. Matt Ryan might be able to perform when you need him, and it still might not add up for fantasy. Oh, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not touting Matt Ryan. For, what are your thoughts on this whole situation? I'm saying Jason? the other guys. Um. No, I, I think Matt Ryan is going to provide more fantasy value for the weapons here than Carson Wentz did. I, uh, it's certainly not going to be Matt Ryan's team. This is Jonathan Taylor's team. This is a, they're going to establish the run. They're going to do that to open up the pass. But I think if you're looking at a Michael Pittman, who is, uh, I mean, you know, pity city. We built this yeah, baby. City. I would say that you've got a guy guaranteed 140 plus targets. I mean, this is someone who last year had 130 targets. Now is the one going into the season with a little around him, and he's going to have higher quality targets going into his year three. So I I really like Pittman. Um, there's not much else to love though in the in the the passing game. I've never been a Paris Campbell stan. I think you'll have two mediocre games and then he'll exit. 
yeah. then there's not a lot else around him. There's giant tight ends. Yes, very big people playing tight end for the Colts. It should be very interesting. The team's identity somewhat changed once they started giving Jonathan Taylor the ball more. And that did have an impact on Pittman over the back half of the season. And uh, we'll see how much they give the ball to Matt Ryan. Um, like I said, we've been down this road a little bit with Phillip Rivers two years ago uh, with the excitement levels, but there, you know, he certainly wasn't the same Phillip Rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, other options beyond Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor. I mean, Taylor, we don't have to talk about you know, very much. You know what he is. He's the number one pick in the majority of fantasy drafts. Um, could have even scored more times. I mean, his pace from week 10 on was 24 and a half. Those were the weeks where Pittman wasn't finding the end zone. It was a run first team even more. But other players to pay attention to would be Paris Campbell. Uh, if you believe all of the things said uh, about Matt Ryan at 37, it won't just be Michael Pittman sure. catching the football. And then Mo Ali Cox as well at tight end. Uh, th baby like, hands, jo uh, Jack Doyle is gone. Yes, he's uh, – Not Jack Hammer, Jack Doyle. No, to the nursery with his baby hands. Do you think there's any value um, in Hines, Naeem Hines, who – just two years ago when Phillip Rivers was there, so a not mobile quarterback, someone who's not trying to extend the play, 76 targets and finished running back 20 on the on the year. I know it wasn't like every single week you were ecstatic to put Hines in there, but I mean, it's, uh, where is uh, – like Hines is being drafted, what, in the 12th over on Sleeper? I mean, I, think I haven't you're... really heard much about him – out there yeah I mean I, I think if you're in a best ball league where you're drafting 18 rounds and you're going to get whatever happens if he ends up with you know a couple passing touchdowns receiving touchdowns then I would um, I would like Hines if you're just in your home league I, he's so clearly behind Jonathan Taylor here that even if he's involved a little bit in the passing game it's probably not worth it as anything more than an insurance pick McKissick or Hines McKissick okay. oh yeah oh I mean man. Hines will exist as a snap goblin <laughs> he, and the one thing that's been annoying about him is he'll pop up and he'll pop up in a red zone uh, for no reason. It's my favorite. Yeah, I mean he will he will exist to make you say, "Darn, Jonathan Taylor didn't get to twenty five touchdowns; he only got to twenty two." Loser. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Texans they are in this division, gentlemen. Four and thirteen last year. Didn't hit their win total, the preseason win total. Uh, oh, and four and one score games. They are projected to win four and a half games this year. Um, it was a troublesome offense. 24th in pace of play, 30th in points per game. Uh, dead last in total yards uh, accumulated. 28th in passing yards. Um, it was bad. They ran the ball on 50% of early downs. That is the third most in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> which is a bad idea in the NFL. Doing? It is very, very uh, poor execution. Like if you've that got was Derrick the early Henry, uh, Ingram days too, right? They just hand it to Ingram oh, for yeah. like one and a half yards. If you have Derrick Henry, okay, you can run it on first down. Sure. But otherwise, <laughs> that's um, just delete a down. You, that's what that it does. Is. You 100%. see bad teams. I I feel like what it is is like you're a bad team and you're just like saying how can we make the game go quicker? The the point gap smaller by the end yeah, of the no, game. We got to get out of here. Keep that clock moving. Yeah. I mean, Did the you one, know that the the Falcons were number two in uh, rushing attempts on first down? Like, yeah. why? Look at your roster. What are you doing? Why would you do that? You got to establish it. Yeah. Um, let's start with the good. Brandon Cooks. Yes. Twenty seven percent target share last year. Ended the year as a top twenty wide receiver despite missing a game. Still managed to deliver. Uh, and that was you know six touchdowns on the season. Davis Mills at quarterback. It seems like they, the floor for Brandon Cooks is pretty high. Yep. And we have him ranked accordingly. Always is. He's always a value in his drafts because nobody wants him. The ceiling isn't there. He doesn't look like a guy who could finish top 10, not with Davis Mills. Uh, the reality is he will outproduce where he's drafted it if he's healthy, and he's been healthy more than he's not. Uh, Davis Mills did have the highest passer rating on 20-plus yard attempts in the NFL yeah. when targeting Brandon Cooks. He had four weeks himself as a top twelve quarterback, which look, I don't I don't think any of us would say you're you're not targeting Davis Mills in drafts. You're probably not even targeting him as a streamer unless you're in a two quarterback league. But mm -hmm. he managed to show up yes, in he did. big games against New England, the Rams, the Chargers, Tennessee. 
I, I like, let me, let me put it this way. I think Davis Mills, the general. Yes. Could be the general of garbage time this year. I he think could. he may really know how to put out. Uh, He'll get the troops and they numbers. will collect. If you're looking at rookie quarterbacks and you look for flashes, you want to see quality, and then you look for that leap in year two, I believe Davis Mills, while he didn't have the draft capital of all the other uh, great you know quarterback class, he's he was the second best quarterback last year like Mac Jones looked the part he he did great Mac he, Jones was in such a good situation <laughs> absolutely but General Mills looked good Trevor Lawrence didn't look good Zach Wilson didn't look good Justin Fields didn't look good now obviously they've got a lot more draft capital they're gonna have a lot more runway they've been given pieces not not Justin Fields but uh, everyone else has been given pieces but I do think General Mills could surprise and could actually be a great quarterback three to have in super flex leagues not necessarily dynasty because I do think he's not the future um, and can produce for Brandon Cooks and also maybe Nico Collins, who looked OK. I think he is John well, Mechie. Yeah, Mechie. They what round they got they second. Tr they traded up to get him in the second. I mean, if out of Bama, like ah, Mechie's very interesting to me. And like it, if this team is really playing from behind frequently which and, they will be and they I mean yeah they they will be and you have a quarterback who is at least decent that's I, I don't know man that's weird I think weirder things have happened what for would, fantasy football if Jimmy Garoppolo happened to go to Houston which is one of a rumored destinations possible does it change your view on Brandon Cooks one way or the other no it'd be pretty lateral for me they do have a, a bunch of players that have been described as running backs to me. <laughs> um, Marlon Mack off the Achilles injury two years ago. Rex Burkhead, who was the de facto starter after Ingram was traded away. Damian Pierce, who will have an opportunity as a rookie running back coming into this roster uh, on a team that is willing to um, both run on first down and fail at it. Are you looking for any sort of nugget in the running back room here late in your fantasy drafts? Um. Yeah. So uh, I'll I'll let someone else talk about Damian Pierce because Good. I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there who uh, are really looking his way. I'm not. In, late in the drafts, Marlon Mack is the name that I find myself drafting. You you've got James Robinson going ahead of Marlon Mack. Um. And when I think about it, it's like okay. Well, James Robinson has has shown you know more in his early career than Marlon Mack did, but. You've got a guy who is months off of a fresh Achilles injury on a bad offense versus a guy who is now a full year recovered from that same injury on a bad offense. And Marlon Mack goes later in these best ball drafts. So Marlon Mack is a guy that you can get pretty much at the, the dead end of your draft or far double digit rounds to hope that he looks good week one. He is going to be the starter week one. I, I don't think there's a bunch of question marks there. Who comes out of the gate and is given the first opportunity? It's just a matter of whether he can look good, recovered from Run that. with it. Hey, <laughs> oh, yeah. I really let us down there. That was good. And at maybe. I don't think it's guaranteed he's the week one starter. He's like if we get into training camp and he looks bad, the team can just move on from him. Like he can he can be released. He was guaranteed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and that's it. Uh, Damian Pierce, the draft capital is not exciting. The, the destination where he went, also not exciting. But production profile, not exciting. Uh, but on film, <laughs> on film, just saying, like, the, he is not, he's not a data player. This is watching him play. He has quick, uh, quick twitch. He has juice. So if we're going through the training camp process and it's like, Damian Pierce might be starting for this team. Then I'm I'm sort of interested. If I'm taking anyone from this team, it's I'll take the shot on Damian Pierce and be wrong week one and move on. Here's a fun. Stat. I remember being told Houston was a good destination for Brees Hall by Jason. Yeah, because, because he would get everything. Brees Hall would have been Brees Hall. You can't just say. I mean, the, Damian Pierce to Brees Hall is uh, what the night players. is to the day. Um, <laughs> since 2014. <laughs> Here's here's a fun stat on fourth I, round. I, I'm surprised you have a cream hunt shirt on today with that comment. <laughs> rookie running backs. Since 2014, 77% of fourth round rookie running backs beat their ADP. And that's why I think a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, I'll try my shot at Damian Pierce. 
but only 26% have finished in the top 36. So beating your ADP when you're late draft pick is like, so what? So you're a little bit better. Only one inside the top 24. I don't think the upside is here for him. All right. Believe it or not, there was a worse team in this division last year. The Jacksonville Jaguars, 3-14. and 14. Uh, they, do co they do go into the season with a 6.5 win total. So two games better than where they have Houston projected. Um, it, it should be better for Jacksonville. It really should. Uh, they they made some offseason acquisitions. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Zay Jones. Uh, they get it. Travis Etienne back is basically an acquisition. And they have a quarterback that at least was drafted to uh, lead a team on into the future uh, with Trevor Lawrence. So two and four and one score games. Uh, under the shadow and doom yes. of uh, Urban Meyer last year, the poo stain that is Urban Meyer. But they were sixth in pace of play Man. last year. If only they could have seen it, you know, coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like they didn't. Like you know, just the, the you know the overwhelming majority of like sports fans, sports right. media, right? You know, just everyone was like, or hanging out with him at all. <laughs> His friends. Being around him, talking to anybody <laughs> that knows him. Watching videos of him or just seeing places he's been, how he yeah. is as a person, yeah. I mean, you probably could have asked anybody, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like his know, auto mechanic would have known. <laughs> no. Family members. Yeah. Um, Visiting his house, seeing all those pictures. Former players. Yeah, it's like if, if only they could have known. Maybe they could only interviewed it. Tim Tebow. <laughs> Man, I Tebow think that's his like only him. friend. I'm I guessing, think that's his only friend I'm in the world. I'm guessing in reality they only interviewed Urban Meyer. <laughs> I, and that dude loves that. Let dude. me tell you about myself. He loves some Urban Meyer. Um, <laughs> yeah, the the reality here is that coaching situation was abysmal. He came in and did not run an NFL offense. He did not adapt. did not help Trevor Lawrence whatsoever. Did no. not help Trevor Lawrence. Now I, I'm a little conflicted because when I watched Trevor Lawrence, I saw, Trevor didn't help himself either. No, I saw like just poor, poor quarterback play. A lot of just wildly inaccurate passes that were like, oh, yeah, you, why why did you throw the ball that bad? It just looked like someone who is figuring it out, not someone who was drafted to be the best prospect since Andrew Luck with the 101 and everybody wanted him. That being said, with the crappy system, with awful wide receivers, which have now been upgraded, and with Urban Meyer, he threw for 3,641 yards. That's a That's a great rookie number. So I do think that there, uh, you know, is a chance that Trevor Lawrence comes on and says, "Hey, there's a reason I was the 101. I am a great future franchise quarterback, not just a solid Derek Carr level good player." But I think there is still the world that exists where he can be a superstar. Okay, that's. I feel like that's you. You you've evolved your opinion of Trevor Lawrence based. Oh, I'm not ever hearing you say that. Yes, I, I have, because leaving last year, there was so much negativity and the fact that he had, you know, a 2% touchdown Is it hair rate. envy, though? It's well, just, could it have been? No, no. Strong I, hair game. Really? Oh, man. You, those I locks. Mean, Dude, I feel like genuinely. If you got it, you flaunt it. I, yeah. I don't know that I would. And I hate my if hair. You, if you could, I don't know that I would trade my hair for his. You are a liar, sir. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his hair is awful. You are a liar. Wow. I was going to say, if you woke up tomorrow and it started growing out, you don't think you'd grow it out a little bit? Well, I mean, look, maybe his follicles, sure. Rapunzel, but if Rapunzel. Keep, if I had to keep his hairstyle, no. The, the style could be updated, but yeah. the, it's good hair. Has he got the leg loss? Is that what he's doing? He's got to do something cool with it. Put in a ponytail. Get, get, get like a samurai style. I don't know if the ponytail works super great with uh, the, under uh, the helmet. The helmet. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Fair. Could you get a hole put in? Ooh. You can ask the NFL. To see if you could have the ponytail at the back. Yeah, I'm sure that the safety people would be cool with that. I mean, this has got to be better than talking about the Jacksonville okay. situation. So right? Jason's point on Trevor Lawrence, that is where – I'm using that information because I have the same, you know, let's be hopeful here. It was the number one pick for a reason. Try to give him the benefit of the doubt for such a bad rookie year. I am letting that hope translate over into to Christian Kirk because they, they gave him a ton of money. Yes, you they had to pay the, the Jacks tax to get uh, good players to come play on they the team. They spent $270 million, the but, most in the NFL. Right. But I, Christian Kirk is a good player. I – I don't think he's a dominant number one in in the NFL, but I do think he is very good. 
and can be it can come in and be the number one guy of draw a 20 plus percent target share and is being drafted in the double digit rounds like that type of volume you're looking rarely, at direction, huh? rarely available that late in a draft I'm, I'm nervous about distribution here i think kirk marvin jones is still there treadwell got involved at the end of the year they uh, signed Zay Jones, Jones for money. They and still have LaVisca. Evan Ingram, who I think yeah. is a name we need to yes, talk we, about. And ETN out of the backfield. Uh, and then if you spread, God forbid he throws for only 3,600 yards again, mm -hmm. you spread that out amongst all those players. It concerns me a little bit for the ceiling. I mean, I don't. you want to take a chance on Christian Kirk, it costs you nothing. There's no exactly. nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, Christian Kirk, we know, is a really good football player. He's not a superstar who's 220 pounds and 6'3 and going to be a touchdown guy, but he's been very valuable through his short career, and if Trevor Lawrence takes that leap forward, I don't have a problem taking that shot. Evan Ingram is a guy I've never really been a stan of. This is true. Um, but I, I recognize his value as a pass-catching tight end. The opportunity here for, you know, we you just brought it up, right? We're not sure there's a lot of mouths to feed here. But also, that means that players have an opportunity to come and establish that they are the dominant one, that they're the tight. You know, if he's the second most targeted player, Evan Ingram, in this offense, we could see how that could be realistic. And with his athleticism, his youth, he's still a young guy, given him quite a big bag of money here to come yep. play, I uh, granted it's the Jacks tax. Uh, yeah, I, I think he is a great mil. a great sleeper deep am, tight end. I'm, I am out. Oh, I'm see. sorry to say I am not going to do it. I've seen five seasons of Evan Ingram, and that's enough. I want to find a bet here. That's enough for me because they still have Dan Arnold on this roster, who's a pass catching tight end. They gave him ten um, million dollars. I don't care about the money whatsoever in, really? in Jacksonville. It doesn't make a difference to me. They traded for Dan Arnold in the middle of the year and gave up assets. I mean, you can make any argument for it, but if you have two pass catching tight ends, a ton of new wide receivers, and five years of history, I'm making a I'm making a business decision to de hype Evan Ingram in my own drafts because I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't think he's going to be on the field a ton. He he's a pass catcher, yeah. He's a pass dropper as well. Yeah, but he professionally. And you you bring in Doug Peterson here, who brings in an offense that is that offense loves to target the tight end position, and like you've seen it from. So know, why not Dan all Arnold? Years, I just following the money. Exactly, they just, had Dan Arnold, and they went and signed yeah. Evan Ingram to a and, bunch of money. And it wasn't just they waited, and then like it, it was very quick that Evan Ingram was brought onto this team. He seemed like a focal point of their free agency search. So I'm eh, – and just the the pro, the profile of a tight end who can really break out, you need the athleticism that Evan Ingram can bring. In year six, you think? Year six breakout for Evan Ingram? Weird things happen with the tight end position. Okay. When did, well, Greg, now you, when you've did heard Greg our Olson do it? Much earlier. Yeah, but it was after But it was the when he, tr he changed teams, he right? Got when he went from, from Chicago, Chicago to Carolina, yeah. Um, pretty sure he showed a lot more in Chicago than Evan Ingram yeah. ever showed in New England. Evan Ingram's uh, rookie year was yeah, one, one of the, the best tight end rookie years of literal all time. Yeah. That was a long time ago. It was. Sure, but you said he hadn't shown anything. Showed a lot in rookie year. <laughs> okay. okay. You can be the Evan Ingram stand of the show. That's just fine with me. I mean, it's not possible. Um, you can't take my job. But Boy, both of you. All in I on Evan Ingram, Mike and Jason. Yeah. Enjoy. Oh, I will. Enjoy. Um, it, it's not going to go well for you. All right, divisional wrap-up here. Who wins the Probably division? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Who wins it? I think uh, I think the Colts take it. No, okay. I lean the Colts as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the toughest player to project in the division for you, who do you think it is? LaVisca Chenault. Is it that, that's tough? Well, it, okay, Hard to project. Fantasy relevant player. Who's that, the toughest that, fantasy relevant that player? That dude's on the way out. That's fair. I think the backfield in Houston is annoying and difficult to project. Because you just really don't have a beat on. I mean, Jason, we showed it on the show. You said Marlon Mack is guaranteed to start. Right. Mike made the point. Damian Pierce is getting attention. Burkhead has somehow established the trust of the organization. That one's the difficult one for me. Yeah, that's fair. But I thought you were changing my LaVisca Chateau into fantasy relevant <laughs> players. I mean, uh, that's did, fair. That's I fair. Mean, the, the, you said Brees Hall would have been fantasy relevant. This is a pretty easy uh, division to just just rank out. Like, 
Not, not is there a mean. sneaky addition? I guess yours is both Evan Ingram. Tra- yeah. Tra- Tra- Traylon Burks is hard to know what to do with right now. He's a, he's a guy when, you, when you're trying to stat someone out that it's like the draft capital yeah, yeah, yeah. versus the early buzz is, is really difficult to uh, put a finger on it. I'll say Brevin Jordan as my sneaky mm. pickup of the division because okay. he's a tight end for Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. They only have like Brandon Cooks and a bunch of unproven, even Mechie, unproven, sure. Nico Collins. I think Brevin Jordan can end up being somebody that Davis Mills – leans on in this offense I will say Alec Pierce as the guy he's the rookie wide receiver yeah. for the Colts he, I think he could easily slot in as the number two target and he was a second round pick this mm-hmm. is a the guy they invested in uh let's circle back real quick because we got Evan Ingram derailed us Travis Etienne uh Jacksonville Jaguars rookie season completely obliterated because of injury but was a first round pick and now James Robinson tore his uh Wait, what was James Robinson's injury? Achilles. Achilles. Okay, thought so. Uh, Torres Achilles right at the end of the year. Where are you with ETN? Because he's being drafted very high. Third round in underdog drafts right now. Yeah, I, uh, third round's too high for me. Yeah, okay. I, I've been right. It's funny because I've been rising on ETN as far as what I believe, but I'm not to that degree yet of of confidence at that third round value there's a lot of data that shows a 21% decline in performance in year one off of the list Frank injury. That's the injury he's coming back from. Uh, we don't even know what his baseline is uh, in the NFL because we, d- we didn't have a rookie year. That being said, uh, all the hope in Trevor Lawrence, who was his college teammate who threw the ball a ton to him, and I think he's going to be used in the passing game. So when you have a pass catcher who was talented, who was a first-round NFL draft pick, it's easy to see why people are saying, well, his ADP keeps rising. I think he could have the opportunity and be great for fantasy because of the pass catching. But you you do have to realize the list, Frank, is not not just one where you come back and dominate year one. And I'm, I'm going to make the prediction right here on the show, um, July 19th. I think James Robinson sees the field early in the season. I've watched videos of him recovering. I've watched him cutting. Whether he's back at the very beginning, he is a bit of a thorn in the season-long projection for Travis Etienne because when you look at the last two years, James Robinson was the offense. I mean, he really was the mm-hmm. most effective offensive piece, and the the team loves him. And Doug Peterson is he's a curious running back user. There is that are, fair? Yeah, yeah, is that yes. fair? That's fair. So I I am worried about the Etienne buzz, 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 and all of a sudden, like you have an active James Robinson in Week One. And there are two plugged-in beat reporters that I know of from that area that both contend that he is the starter. But do they have a cool name like Jack Hammer? No, no, they don't have. They don't (laughs) have have like. Is it Bob Cat? Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah, or Catter Pillar. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, just stay. Not not quite as nice. I hear. (laughs) I hear Al Borland cackling in the back. All right, that is going to do it. Let's end with uh, Jack Hammer here. Thank you for that report, by the way. Back with a new show on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.